All right, YouTube, it's the 72 El Camino video log. About three weeks left until the maiden trip up to Cody, Wyoming. And about two weeks following that should be the trip for the Hot Rod Power Tour. The last week we've been doing a lot of electrical on the car. Uh, really, we're down to electrical and fuel are the two things that need to get finished up before we can uh, put power to the engine and get this thing fired up. Front end's pretty well together, uh, grill's just sitting in there right now, it needs to be secured. Uh, electrical, we're not going to go to this side first, this side's nearly complete. Uh, up underneath the fender well there is uh, all the relays for the electric fans. Electric fans turned out quite nice, i got to get a little bit more wire loom. I've got one ground connection uh, to complete, um, <clears throat> so this corner's in good shape. This corner has a lot going on. Uh, it's nearly complete, but we're waiting on some parts. So I put in an order today for a whole bunch of components from Dell City Wire. Uh, just a note on that, I could get a lot of the parts at the local auto parts store. Uh, some of the lugs, so like the lug for that ground wire that I just showed you, is 429 from the local auto parts store. From Dell City, I need to buy 20 of them but I think they were 35 cents a piece. Same quality, so you know I'll have plenty of extras on hand after the fact. So this corner, like I say, a lot going on. Battery cables are all cut to length and uh, ready now. Um, the circuit for the power fans need to go to a circuit breaker, which I made another uh, panel underneath this fender as well. Um, so that needs to be connected, that's part of the order. Uh, some wire loom for some of these things, but uh, probably another two hours worth of work in this corner will be done. Um, uh, one note about battery cables. Basically, it's really hard to find good quality battery cables any longer. There's just the generic part store ones. Uh, I looked around, pretty much all of them are four gauge unless you get into the really, really high end or really big truck ones. So it's kind of difficult to find good ones. Um, these here I actually got from AutoZone. I couldn't find them anywhere else. These are 2 gauge. Everything else is 4 gauge. For some reason AutoZone sells 2 gauge wire. Uh, equivalent price. So, you know, nice little upgrade. Talking about electrical, we're going to go move back here. This is a power distribution block off of a mid 90s Chevy pickup truck. It's not on every one of the trucks, but probably half of them. I've noticed these at the uh, U Pull It junkyard the other day and so I picked a couple of them up, they're cheap, and I wanted to see how heavy duty they were. So this is all uh, plastic, so it's uh, isolated. And so I busted one apart. This is an 80 thousandths thick by uh, inch and an eighth wide piece of copper plate with riveted studs on it. This thing's heavy duty. This thing will hold a lot of amperage. So I've got another one. I'm gonna get one more next time I go into town to the junkyard. Uh, you see this big red wire, this is a 6 gauge wire. So from the battery, uh, there's going to be a 50 amp circuit breaker on that little panel underneath. And then there's this 6 gauge wire that's going to run back and it's going to be underneath the dash. And I'm going to have a 50 amp power distribution block under the dash. I'm also going to do the same thing with a uh, ground lead as well. So there'll be a six gauge ground lead that runs directly from the battery to under the dash. So when I want to add a radio or this or that later on, I've got plenty of power ready to go. Okay, moving on into the interior, things are starting to come along. Uh, most of the dash wire, I'm going to come on this side for now. Most of the dash wiring is in here. It's not secured yet. There are a few connections that still need to be made. But for the most part, we're in good shape. So we need to make those connections. Uh, then start, uh, you can see right here the vent uh, for the defroster is in. All of the hoses from the vintage air unit need to get run through here and it's quite a spaghetti farm and there's not going to be a lot of room. So get the wiring done first, then get those in and then lastly I got to try to figure out where I'm going to put that power distribution block. Uh, that sounds like a great idea but trying to find out where it goes is kind of a pain. Alright, coming into the car I want to show you um, well, let me grab this first. So, the light's probably going to blow this thing out pretty bad. 
This is a dual fan controller from Dakota Digital Dash. This thing is digital and completely programmable. Uh, you can program each fan to turn on at whatever temperature and each fan to turn off at whatever temperature. It will keep fans on after the key is off if you wish for that. Uh, it'll do a lot of different things. It's a really nice unit and it costs about the same as most of the other um, fan controllers. So really pleased with it. Uh, this thing I'm going to need access occasionally but just to change things on the uh, if I want to change settings. So I don't really need it. Uh, I don't have a lot of room under the dash so I wasn't quite sure where to put it where I could get to it but not have it right out in the open. So what I ended up doing double or er, uh, stick on velcro. So I put an aluminum plate and I'm going to see if I can show this without screwing up too bad. So there's an aluminum plate down in there and you reach your hand down underneath and stick it on and voila. So you can't see it normally. It's up underneath the dash. It's right in this area here. But if you need to use it, all you do is reach up underneath, pull it off the Velcro, and you've got access to it. Next, which I haven't shown before, is my dashboard I made last fall. Uh, those are all auto meter uh, gauges. Uh, oil on the left, speedometer, tachometer, water, volt, and fuel. So in the Stock GM housing. I made my own little sheet metal, sheet metal inlet, inlay, whatever you want to call it. Um, off you go. So I'm looking forward to that. And then the vintage air control there. Again, nice shifter. Happy about that. Um, the inside of this interior is pretty sparse because I took the steering wheel off because I had it on and I kept bashing my head into it. It made no sense. So I took that off. Uh, seats are ready to go, seat belts are ready to go. They're just in the way right now, so no sense dealing with them. Uh, sail panel, so I just built, made these the other day. Uh, new cardboard, put new covering on them. The headliner, I've got the reflective material on it. I've got a little sound deadening i got to get in town next time I go in. Uh, painted the back wall and the back shelf. Uh, yeah, so the interior is starting to come together. Again, I gotta get the wiring done, and that's really, there's no sense putting seats in and stuff until the wiring's done. So, like I say, I'm waiting on a few things, but we're coming along nicely. I would say within the next week, we should hear a motor running, I would hope. And then, hopefully we'll get to little things like door panels and windows and seats and things like that, so. Thanks for watching along. Um, Ooh, I do want to note one other thing. I don't really have a good example of it. I guess I could come over here and look. So I will show after this, um, me fixing up the battery box and I welded some captured nuts. So GM grounds, GM grounds things to the body quite often, which works good. The problem is, is they just go through the sheet metal and usually the uh, sheet metal strips out after about the second or third time. So one thing I did is I took the headlight buckets off uh, and then welded quarter inch, 5 16 inch, and uh, 1032 nuts onto the wall, uh, radiator support. So I've got good secure grounds which will help out quite a bit as well. So little things like that. It takes a bunch of time right now but it'll make things a lot better later on. So. Thanks for watching. If you get a chance, hit the subscribe button so you'll be notified when I got more updates. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll get you some more videos soon. Take care. All right, this morning, what I'm trying to do is so I got this battery tray. It's an aftermarket repro reproduction unit. Decent quality. It's the same thickness as the original, the metal is. But one of the things on it is, is there's these weld-in, you can see a couple of fasteners here, uh, weld-in little nuts. And that's where the, uh, this attaches to the inner fender well. And then this here, this particular bolt here attaches to the firewall. So the first time I put this in, this little nut popped off almost instantly. So this is a weld nut. It's got four little protrusions in the corner. It gets in whatever factory this is built, gets stuck on there, and then gets resistance welded. 
and obviously they didn't put much current to it because the thing just snapped off almost immediately. So what I'm going to do is go through, there's three of these fasteners that get used. I'm going to go through, wire wheel them up, get the paint off, and then get the welder out and just give them a little bit of a tack on each one just so they aren't going to break free as easy. I'm sure they will not be pretty, but they're going to be underneath the battery, so I'm not that worried about them. Let's have at it. The bad boy. Those things are well in there now. They're not super pretty. Um, I don't know how well it came out on the camera because you can't see what I'm doing so much, but uh, I make sure I can actually weld the bolts in. That's kind of handy. I've done that once or twice. Uh, yeah, the battery's going dead on my wonderful. Auto darkening welding helmet. Uh, I've got Hobart welders, I love them. So I bought a Hobart auto dark welding helmet. That thing eats batteries. The headband doesn't adjust properly and it eats batteries. So, not a good deal on that one. But. So, next time we go into town, I'll be buying some new batteries. But those are in there and they are solid. Quick shot of paint, we'll be putting that sucker back in.